Well, hi, and welcome to this special edition of the Business Profile here on, on TV3. Dave Oni here along with Tom Lundberg. And we've got a special project going on just south of Detroit Lakes. It's kind of got people wondering just a little bit. Yes, uh, yeah, thanks, Dave. Yeah, we have a roundabout coming to our neighborhood, and it's new to our area. We've done some roundabouts around the state within MnDOT, and uh, in our area over in the Fargo-Moorhead area, there's some roundabouts, but they're new to our area, so we wanted to pop on and talk to the viewers today a little bit about them so that you understand what a roundabout is and how to drive one here in a real quick fashion. So. Um, so the reasons we chose a roundabout, we have a slide here kind of covering that, but it uh, is a really good safety aspect or a safety feature to do for an intersection there. Um, it brings speeds down at an intersection, and so the types of crashes get to be a lot less severe. Uh, the angles of impacts are more at side swipes and things like that, so um, there, there isn't as a great of a safety issue out there. So some of the statistics on roundabouts in general, they'll reduce crashes by about 40% in general, which is a huge amount for an intersection like this. Some of the bigger ones are the injury crashes where you have to go to the hospital. It drops that rate down, or by 76% it'll drop down. And so that's a huge benefit there. And the big one there, way on the uh, right hand side there, is the fatalities. It'll reduce the fatalities in general by almost 90% at a similar type intersection to this, which is huge because we've had one of those out here in the past. Some of the other benefits of a roundabout, uh, pedestrians you can get through a little bit easier. You're crossing one leg of an intersection at a time, a shorter distance, and we'll kind of look at that as we move forward here, but it's easier for pedestrians to get on through out there, not that we see a lot of them out in that area. But um, the other one is it reduces uh, delay by up to 75%. So it processes a lot of cars, a lot more than you'd see at a signalized intersection and the four-way stop that we've had as an interim condition out there as well. So moving on to our next slide. Um, some of the generalities of a roundabout, um, just to talk about those, as you're coming to a roundabout, you'll see a central, we call it a splitter island, a raised median in the middle that kind of helps to guide you as you're coming into the roundabout and enter at the right direction. There's uh, crosswalks at all the legs of the intersection there. I talked about the short little jaunts that you have to go across. There'll be a yield sign as you come into the roundabout, which uh, you'll yield if there's traffic in the roundabout in front of you. If there isn't, you enter into the roundabout and you can exit out at whatever direction you need to go. Other features of the roundabout is there's a central island that's raised. This one will be raised, it'll be planted with some flowers uh, to kind of make it look kind of nice out there. And also just outside of that, there's a truck apron. What that's there for is the back trailer of longer trucks will ride up on that. It's raised up by about five inches there so they can get through because it's a real tight, compact intersection there to kind of keep the speeds down, but you have to allow the trucks to get through. So. They'll ride up on that, but <clears throat> it's something that the passenger cars have to get around and it keeps the speeds down. So we're going to quick look at a video of uh, our roundabout that we have in South Moorhead and take a quick look at how to drive that. So here we are coming up to the roundabout in South Moorhead that we have here and some of the features that you can see. You've got the raised island in the middle. You've got the curb and gutter on the outside. You can see the little bit of the crosswalk here and the yield sign coming up there. So as we're coming in, you're gonna to yield to cars that are going in the roundabout. And once they all get by, you can come into the roundabout, go out to the exit that you need to go. In this case, we're taking a left-hand turn here, so we're going three-quarters of the way around the roundabout and exiting out the other side. And so it's a fairly simple operation. You just have to remember that you're gonna enter the roundabout going to the right and you're gonna exit going to the right in a counterclockwise fashion. So we'll have some contact information if you had further questions or wanted to look up some information that the state has on roundabouts, you can do so, but otherwise, thanks for listening and have a safe trip.